so much. Um, our next speaker that we'll be calling up is uh, Eric Burton, uh, specializing in ancient Kauai ma um, mapping. And so we'll be speaking about the topic, how are ancient trails located? Um, I would like to go ahead and ask that we give a round of applause for Mr. Eric Burton. <laughs> Uh, who, who am I? They, um, they call me Banana Guy in Kauai. Um, my given name is Eric Burton, but the reason why I'm here all starts from that pico of being Banana Guy. And the way that happened is um, when I came here to these islands, I fell in love with this group of ancient banana varieties, these ones that the Polynesians have been bringing with them on their migration journeys over thousands and thousands of years. And um, uh, real quick, what happens there is you have a clump of wild bananas growing in the forest. They're seeded. Um, an indigenous person is cruising through the forest, sees this wild clump of bananas, and one of the keiki, one of the little suckers, has mutated. This is a natural mutation that occurs, and all the bananas on that stalk are nice and fat with no seeds. The plant looks a little different than the rest of the clump. That smart kanaka says, ah, gift from Kanaloa, taking it. Cut down the bananas, eat the nice big fat fruit, take that keiki, plant it in your village next to your house, grow it out, see if it's interesting, see if it has any unusual traits. If it does, then you and the other group of folks in that area will get together and decide on a name for that banana. And then if it's good, you'll transport it from island to island. And this is how our Chiquita bananas came into being today. If somebody had not recognized that singular mutation and preserved it, it wouldn't be there today. So as Polynesians traveled throughout Oceania and became Hawaiians, they brought all of these food plants with them. In the American Southwest, you have squash, beans, and corn. And here you have taro, sweet potatoes, and bananas. There are other foods, but that's the trinity. And so as these groups came in on their canoes, they might have great-grandpa defleshed and wrapped up in the ka'ai to preserve the bones and bring them. You might have the gourd with water from the sacred spring. You're going to have your planting cuttings so that you can reestablish your food when you come to this new place. And those varieties of plants that these families bring with them are very, very special to these families. They have you know, collected and identified and preserved these special kinds of this is the kind of banana our family likes to eat. This is our favorite kind of sweet potato and so on. So when these folks, so when these travelers came to the islands, the Ali'i Aimoku, the chief who eats the island, had three basic options when these people in the canoe land. Kill them and take all their stuff. Let them live, but not here. Cruise on to another island, just keep traveling. Or let them live here. And if you let them live here, most of the land, especially the good land, the kai, down by the ocean where all the protein is and the good climate and access to the ocean, that's all taken. It's been developed. Their families have, have been utilizing that for a long time. So the, the king usually said, or the kanohiki, whoever's there to determine at the time, you get to stay, but you're going way mauka. You're going to go way past all these other families that have already established themselves. Don't let anything fall out of the canoe. <laughs> we haven't, you know, don't know you guys yet. So they would basically be given one of the drainages way up the valley that had not been cleared and developed yet. So as you go up the valley, you've got all the low E that are down on the valley floor, and then you have these drainages that go up the side of the hill, and you'll see all these valleys on Kauai. The drainages have kukui trees and bananas and bamboo. There's all kinds of stuff in there. So they've got to go clear one of these drainages out and inhabit it, settle it, and put all their stuff in. So as you look up these valleys, just imagine these va'a from the travelers hanging on the sides of the hill each one of these drainages containing all of the things that were unique and special to that group of people that migrated in. So like with so many things in Hawaii, it's, everything is related to each other. You can't just take one slice and look at it that way. So um, as part of, um, to support my banana habit, I developed a research tool that I really wanted to have that didn't exist. And I was playing with Google Earth at the time. I would use it to look at ridges that would be the best ones to hike down into the valley. You know, how do you get down into these little valleys to take a look at that plant to see if it's got any fruit on it, see if you can identify it. And, um, and I'd bring my GPS and I'd run trails and I'd mark things along the way. And over time, this, this information starts to accumulate and it, you, you start creating this kind of this map of the ancient world. And it really, it really crystallized for me that part of my banana kuleana was to help do mapping on some of these places to help put all this information together. And so today I'm coming to speak to you through one of the projects that I do, the Ancient Kauai Mapping Project, which is a fancy thing for my personal hobby, basically. I do not um, publish these maps online. There's a, a lot of information in there, which I'll be sharing with you guys today. If your community group or yourselves are interested and have a, a genuine need for this information, I do make it available, but you've got to get it through Kanaka Maoli and essentially go to your local Hawaiian person in your area, somebody who has standing in the community, 
let them know what you want to do and that you'd like to have access and then you know, bring that permission and, and we'll get you the data. Um, but here on today, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, how I've learned to identify where the agricultural complexes are all the way Malka. And for the trail meeting today, I think that this is going to be helpful because it'll help to give some of you a good idea about how the trails fit into the overall land use pattern that was occurring in ancient times. Um, bona fides, I don't uh, have three letters after my name to defend. I'm an amateur. I'm not part of an organization or paid to work. This is just completely a, you know, work, a affair of the heart, if you will. So they call them I for some of the things that I may have incorrect or may not know. It, again, it's an amateur effort. Um, so what I've done today is a, a little bit unusual from some of the presentations I've done in the past. I, I usually use um, PowerPoint, but you know, I'm one of these people that can go on for a while and go off on tangents. So today I'm experimenting with you guys. I'm going to try a little different format. I've taken my slides and I've created them into a video. Hopefully I've timed every slide so it's long enough for you guys to digest the information. Um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff as we go through, but I've tried to make it pretty self-explanatory. And then this will keep me to the, uh, hopefully about 15 minutes total. Hope has also asked me to um, provide some imagery and maps of what is left of the trail system that can be determined um, for the Ko'olau area. And that is basically the land area in Kauai that is in the northeast that covers Anahola to Kilauea. And so that's a fairly undeveloped stretch of the island that's important on a number of levels. And it's one of the reasons that we're all here today. So uh, let's give it a play. Um, I used documentation from 1848, the Great Mahale, because that's when most of the records were created. There's, that wasn't necessarily the point of peak population. There may be other Ahupua, they're not represented. Previous slide is just showing that I've also done mapping on Nihau, Nihau and Nihoa. And here you can see all the layers turned on. So in GIS, you map things out in layers. One layer might be place names, another might be waterways, another might be trails, agricultural complexes. Here you can see a little bit more zoomed in. I've put a lot of stuff into this map. It's, it's very detailed. 100% volunteer in coordination with my banana project. It's multidisciplinary. You've got to be into ethnobotany, cultural anthropology, archaeology, digital mapping, and then also hiking out to these places and ground truthing it. Um, and I did publish a paper on it. So, you know, it is out there. You guys can, um, can look that up. The layers that I include, and this is not all of them, but the primary ones, Ahupua'a boundary, so you gotta start with the boundary. You got the agricultural complexes, which you might think of as lo'i, place names, waterways, trails, uh, land commission awards, Ely and other land divisions, um, canoe plants, what we call transported landscapes in the business. So with GIS, you've got layers, and you can see the image on the right, you got all those different layers that stack up over a three-dimensional image of the terrain. And um, again, each one of these layers has a different set of information. And most GIS tools, you can turn the layers on individually or turn them all on at once, which is what I like to do. Then you can fly through the landscape and get an idea about all the different things that are in the area that you're interested in. So there's the Ahupua'a map, and then here it is projected over the island with all the individual boundaries. Each little icon offshore, you can click on it, and it's got a ton of info. And then I'm going to show you some of the layers. Um, I've got Hanalei Ahupua'a highlighted up there on top. And here are all the agricultural complexes in Hanalei. So these are all the, the terraces, all the lo'i, if you will, that go Mauka. And if you take a look at Google Earth today or just go to the Tarot Lookout, you can see quite a few of them, and you can see where the lo'i disappear into the bush as you go Mauka. And that's one of the ways that I, I cut my teeth and figure this out. Essentially what you're looking at are flatlands next to the river that have been water leveled. And you can, in Google Earth, move the cursor across the image for quite a ways, and you'll see the elevation only change by a foot or two. That doesn't occur in nature, that's water leveled, pond field agriculture. So the, some of the layers I do are all the canoe plants. Here you've got bamboo. Um, you can also map out how bush. The mango trees, they came in in 1820 to Oahu on a boat called the Bessie. When they were brought in, the Hawaiians were like, stoked. Here's this huge tree that creates all this food. We're planting them everywhere we live. So the mangoes line up with the land commission awards because you can kind of see where people were living. The lolu palms, so as the Hawaiians planted their food plants, the rats followed and ate all the lolu seeds. So where the Hawaiian food stops, the lolu palms continue. Um, here you've got all the tea plants. Tea is indeterminate, grows forever, um, does not create seeds. It has to have a piece broken off and stuck in the ground. 
when you turn all the plants on, it gives you an idea. And these are all plants that were introduced by Hawaiians and planted in the traditional way. And so it gives you an idea about how extensively that valley was used, all the way up to the very tip top. And then, of course, you turn all the layers on with the rivers and the place names. And with this mapping project, when you click on one of these icons, that's going to pop a whole page of text that I've laboriously typed in with cross-references to where the information came from. And in our researches, we go through so much information that we'll have these little fragmented pieces of data and you forget where did it come from. You, you may not have remembered it correctly. And this is just another way of sorting through all of that data. So the, um, as you add all these layers, this ancient cultural landscape emerges because it's agricultural, but there's also other kinds of cultural in there. Um, but just looking at the, at the plants tells a story. I think of this as, as reading the forest. Um, whoever wins the war writes the history and the plants can tell us a version of history that is not adulterated by humans. As part of the research, I use tax maps and overlay them. I make the maps semi-transparent. I turn on all my layers, and then I add all the stuff the map has that I don't have. This one is interesting. This is the Honolulu Homestead's um, neighborhood, which was never developed. It was laid out on the maps. And one of um, the ideas that it validates is that in old times, you were given a lo'i to work, as well as the drainage going up the side of the hill, some kula lands. And that showed both of those. Here's the North Shore moku with all the canoe plants turned on. Kanaka has penetrated very far into the valleys. Um, it did a little something different with Lumahai. The tools I use allow me to actually measure the area on the valley floor. And so I measured the actual square footage for all the lo'i going up the valley. I think for Lumahai, there were 20 to 30,000 people living in that one valley, just based on the carrying capacity of the lo'i, which is really big. Here's Wailua. You can see all the agricultural complexes going all the way up to the Blue Hole. And now at the very bottom, you can see the land claim awards. And so the population had collapsed so much that everybody just basically went down to the coast where all the goods are. Um, in the land claim records that I do, the little envelope you can see on the, the land area I've drawn out. And then if you click on the envelope, up pops that whole record. And it gives you both of the letters that the Kanaka had submitted to the commission. You can see all the plants in the landscape. Here's more land claim records popping up. So this database is just full of information. Just full of information. It's full of it. <laughs> kind of like me. Um, you can see the Wickman books here, all the Kauai legend books. Each one of those books is mapped out by book, by story, by chapter. So if you're interested in the legend in your area, you fly your neighborhood, you click on the legend, it'll open the book, the chapter. Here's all the waterways. I've separated that state GIS database into each river and each valley and each ahupua. So you can pull up your valley and look at your river. These are the plantation ditches that were hand dug. This is where all the water went. A very extensive system. And then, of course, the trails. This particular map covers the Na'alahele trails, as well as all the little hunter's trails and every little thing I can find when I'm using my extensive database of aerial images that covers it. And um, I love this picture of an Uwala farm here on Kauai. This came out of um, in a set of images that was created by a gentleman by the name of Proctor. And this is a whole series of black and white panoramic images that are mega pans. And it's some of the largest imagery that I've seen from that time. So, so that's that video. And now I'm going um, to play this next video that shows you the coastline of the Ko'olau area. Give an idea of the trail system for the Ko'olau area. So here's the Ahupua'a of the Ko'olau area. And again, those boundaries are as of 1848. Boy, you really can't see here, but you've got all these nice little lines along the coast that show you the trail. Um, I'll work with Hope afterwards, and maybe we can post this online so that you guys will be able to you know, see some of the lines here. And so here we are starting off with some aerial video. Um, this is Aliomanu in Anahola Bay. And so the idea here with, with these images is just to you know, be able to get a bird's eye view of some of these areas for some of you folks who hadn't had the opportunity to hike these areas. So Anahola Bay over to Aliomano there and the road in the foreground we're assuming is part of the old Alaloa. And there's Kalalea and Kona Na'e mountains there, Kong Mountain. The whole range is Kalalea, yeah. And right up around that bend over there, there's actually fish ponds and a number of things that are around that corner. And so then that point there is the end of Aliomanu, and then this is going up the coast here. 
And so in a lot of these areas where it's been developed, it's hard to find any scars on the land from the old trail systems because the housing and so on has really erased those signs. And so you can see on a hole away in the distance there. So each one of these video segments is going to progress up the coast towards Kilauea. Lots of homes on ag land there. We call those gentlemen's ranches. I don't see any, any trees, no little orchards or anything. I don't know where they get their ag receipts. <laughs> this whole stretch of coast has some of the best preserved coral reefs on Kauai, which isn't saying much considering how damaged our reefs are. One of the first things that happens is our local fishermen, our three-prongers, will come in and take out all the parrotfish. They're beautiful, they taste good, but unfortunately they eat all the algae off the coral. So once they're gone, it releases a cascade. It uh, basically degrades the whole ecosystem. For those of you who do get to play around in Kauai, this is the beach that's um, just a little bit south of Papa'a. And right there where those rocks are, that's supposed to be the spring of Maliu, having to do with the legend of Alio Manu, with the shark and the scar on his face from the birds. So right where that house is built is supposed to be the sacred spring of Maliu. And an ahu that was dedicated to it right there. I don't. When you look at the land, um, when you look at the land records today, usually there's a, some type of an organization instead of the individual landowner's name for some of those big properties. So around that point there is Papa'a Bay. And this is Papa'a Bay, where I've heard Will Smith has the house that's in the bay. The trail today comes right down the cliffs there, and you've got to walk all along the lava rocks to get down to the beach. It's probably one of the prettiest beaches on all of Kauai, and nine out of ten times that I go there, there's nobody on the beach at all. Surfers go down there. Um, some, you know, mom's groups with the kids. I really don't see really anybody else there. Occasionally some people come out of the residence, but usually it looks just like this. And we think that that may be a fish pond there because you can still see all the lava rock left on that reef. And north of Papa'a, you've got a, a stretch of coastline there that's very hard to get access to because there's really no, no beach, not much of a, of a rocky coast. It's a pretty steep cliffside. And then here you are at Molawa'a. Where Limu was transplanted from the Big Island for the royalty, right? So we did find trail remnants on the hillside to the far right over there. There's definitely some scars. Oh, there's a variety of limu, the red limu. Mulawa is known for the red limu, yeah. I find quite a bit of it up and down that whole stretch of coast. This was when we were having all that Kona weather and the water was all flat. And so my understanding here about the trail in Molawa'a is the hill you see coming into view there, it is essentially fully established legally that we have public rights to that stretch of the trail, that there's no controversy. I don't know how you get to it. But. Gives you a sense of how much of Kauai is really, you know, still rural. And then this is Ka'aka'a Niu. And that's Larson's, or better known as Lepe'uli. Larson was the Luna for the sugar plantation, so that was his home down there. The 
won't tell anybody, but that's one of the best shelling beaches on the island. And so right down there, where the little strip of sand is, Kakatniu, and then right below the image where, right below where this is being taken is the, 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 the rock pile, essentially, where you're looking to see the fish. And then there's the trail that goes down that everybody's fighting over. And then right at the bottom of the imagery is the one that goes straight down to the rocks, which you'll see in just a minute. And this is, instead of taking the easy route down, which is pretty obvious, that's what they're expecting everybody to go down, right there to the beach. And, you know, in old times, just like today, trails are always on the path of the least resistance. We're constantly realigning highways to make them straighter and easier. And it's really hard to imagine that in old times that was the way to get down to the beach for everybody. And certainly if it wasn't around the island trail and the king's men are running messages, that's not going to be the efficient pathway. And there we are, up to, all the way to Kilauea. And that's everything. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, here. The way I look at it, my Kulian is very specific and does not include material culture. So it's a little bit Niele <laughs> to be looking at this. But I, I, I just couldn't help but keeping this image because um, for material culture, this stone bowl, which I'm assuming is an Ava bowl, is located way Malka on Kauai. And most Ava bowls that you see have, you know, little people underneath them holding it up or some other kind of ornamentation. For an Ava bowl, this is very, very plain. But if you look at it, it is sublime. And what is sublime is it looks like it was turned on a lathe out of wood. Look how thin the walls are. Look how perfect the circle is. I showed this to the state archaeologist, Alan Carpenter, and I will not tell him where it is because I'll put it in the bishop and we'll never see it again. Um, you know, if you look at the size of the leaves on the ground, I think it's maybe a little under two foot diameter, maybe somewhere a foot and a half, two foot, something like that. And um, Alan told me he's never seen anything like this in the Hawaiian record. So Kauai still has a few things to share. But, but, you know, if you understand material culture, that bowl should freak you out pretty much. 